welcome to my channel, Steve-O the Window Cleaner. Today, uh, I am going to a residential job. Done this home for like seven or eight years. And uh, I use water-fed pole on the exterior. Usually, I would start inside and do the windows inside first. But we got some rain coming here, so I'm gonna start on the outside and get that done. But basically, uh, this is gonna be kind of a video like the last video. I don't know how long it's going to be. It might be like an hour, but I'm going to walk you through setting up my whole entire water fed pool. Remember, I use a portable water fed system. I do not use a van or truck mounted system. So I'm going to be using the X2. Um, I'll walk you guys through like everything about that. But I basically want to do this just to kind of um, have an updated video about this. Uh, it just seems like sometimes it's just not getting through to the people who purchase these systems, how to set them up correctly. So I'm hoping this video can help. And then we'll also go through quite a bit of technique with what I use for my favorite brushes and accessories uh, as I go through the outside of this home. Got some good like second floor work with the walkout basement. It's not that high. I'd say maybe the highest window is maybe 25 to 30 feet, probably 25. And then, um, yeah, I just wanna have a simple kind of walkthrough and water fed pulling the exterior of this home and just show you the setup and then Hopefully this can answer some questions for you all. Uh, I see a lot of people use the wrong hoses to go from the spigot to their system. Zero peers come with a three eight inch inner diameter hose and a lot of customers will use that hose to feed their system. No, 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 no. Normal garden hose, like five eight inch inner diameter. So let's get to this job and I'll just walk you guys through everything possible and try to make it uh, very, very detailed, but quick and to the point. Um, so yeah, let's go. Okay, so first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna take a normal garden hose, right? We are gonna hook this up to the source. It is possible on some homes that you may have to hook up to the front and back. If you don't wanna do that, and doing some homes, you may want to think about adding a booster pump, but I with the X2 can easily have a 25 to 50 foot normal garden hose running to my X2 with good pressure from the source to my X2 and have 200 feet of 3 8 inch inner diameter hose plus my water fed pole hose, which is about 40 feet and have awesome, awesome pressure. Always make sure you have no kinks when doing this stuff. Okay. I always try to set it up in the lawn if possible. After we get that, we'll get our zero pier. So you could have a zero pier junior, you could have a zero pier, you could have an X2, whatever. It's all the same setup doesn't change. Some people get a zero pure or a zero pure junior and see a video about the X2 and think that everything is dramatically different. The only thing different between zero pure junior and a um, say zero pure X2 is the outward flow. You get about a gallon per minute for this and you get about a half a gallon per minute out of a uh, zero pure and a zero pure junior. Okay, so I got these brass quick connects. You all have seen these before, but if you're new to the channel, this is what I use. This does not come with the X2. This is usually white. I just did this for fun to get something different as I get bored. So before I go get anything else, I'm gonna turn the unit on. You don't have to do this step. I like to do it though to get the ROs filled up and going. If I'm out of breath, that's because I work hard. You people message me on my channel like, oh, why are you out of breath? Oh, it's because I'm working. So don't be a jackass. All right. So you have it going. Okay, it's filling up. Kind of see the water here in this. Boom, going out here. Okay, so I let that do that. Then I hook up the hose reel. Brand new screen cleaner. I haven't had a new screen cleaner in years. I got one. Okay. Let's 
hook this up right into here. And I unreel my whole entire hose reel, just in case the hose reel is kinked. This is 150 feet. I find 150 feet is best overall. But you see, it really doesn't take that long to get this all set up. You technically don't have to do this, but it's something that I do. Also gonna get some skylights on the roof as well. Okay, now we'll get my pole. I use the Destroyer 30 foot most of the time now. And then I have my 40 foot extension in here. We're gonna use bore here. I got my rinse bar. My rinse bar is a little bit, um, I put some JB Weld to make this shorter. I found that these aluminum bars uh, don't have the best pressure like the plastic ones do. So that's what I do with this now to keep that always good pressure. Um, I did show off this brush recently, which is an awesome brush. I just haven't got to use it uh, quite a bit because all my jobs are really dirty. So this one has a rinse bar in the middle. These aren't available yet. I don't know if they'll ever be available here, but I bought this from X-Line in the UK. Okay, so I always keep my whole entire configuration here put together as much as possible so that already my uh, setup time is done. I'll align this to be about right there. And actually, what I'm gonna do is I always find with these windows right here um, that the bore here catches it a little bad but I think it'll be okay today. When these were these, they actually replaced all of these windows a couple years ago, but I think we'll be okay. But I do have oxidation that will come off of all of these frames. Okay. Sometimes when you first get this zero hose, or really any hose, this is polyurethane, it'll be a little sticky. If you want it to uh, get better right away, get some dirt on it, no joke. Uh, once you start using it quite a bit, it all relaxes, it doesn't kink, and it's perfect to use. Okay, water's flowing through this perfect. If I hit this, boom. Water's going through here, going through my DI, going through my freaking hose, to my hose here. Just for fun, I'll show you that it's zero TDS. That's just air at the beginning. If you ever see white come out of here, hey, okay. got great pressure going. A little bit of air getting out of the system. We've talked about this before. Totally, totally normal. Your ROs are always pressurized um, inside those vessels. So sometimes that's why you get this and you get a little bit of air moving through the, uh, the hose here too. So, all at zeros. Okay, hey, good to go there. Remember, you can use pure water. Really, highest I go is about 15 to 20. Um, technically, in my area, I could change out nothing probably for two years and be fine. But just as a good rule, I change everything at least, at least once a year, usually twice a year. And my carbons I replace about three to four times a year just to keep that going good and keep my RO healthy. Okay, good to go. I'll just show you. So, you got good pressure there. Boom, bada boom. Get the brush a little bit wet so we have good glide up there. And we're good to go. Zero Destroyer is gonna be the easiest pull to control as far as just really any other pull. I've seen. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit those frames just like this, just to start, and I'm going to give that top frame a good rinse. Okay, move to this window, do the same thing. I'm really wasting no time scrubbing the glass. 
I'm just scrubbing that frame to get that little bit of oxidation off. Oxidization, oxidation, I don't get that crap. Same thing with these. It's very, it's a good temperature out here right now, so I don't need to wait too long for drip time. These windows aren't insanely dirty either. So boom, I'd rinse that off. Now, if you're a person that doesn't clean frames, it's totally fine. It's nothing against you. For me, this was the technique that changed it all for me that allowed me to use water-fed pole anywhere and anywhere that I wanted. So you see the pressure is outstanding with that, just like that. So now what I'll do is I will go back to this window, cross, cross, down, scrub out that area. No reason to use the bronze wool holder here. Just a good scrub. Make sure I get my bottom good. Now boar hair at this angle is gonna grab a lot more. So it's gonna be a little harder to move or a hybrid brush. If this wasn't moving good enough for you, you may wanna use that just to have really, really good glide. Now my pressure is almost too high here, but I'm gonna keep it. I think it will be fine. So same thing here. So like I said, this is gonna be a lot like my last video. It's gonna be long and it's gonna be a walkthrough of just what I do on the exterior of most homes with water-fed pole. These type of windows are pretty perfect for water-fed pole. They're casements and the, uh, the frames don't drip a lot or have a lot of issues. They do have some oxidization on them, but not nearly as bad because this customer keeps their windows up regularly every year with me. So I don't need to spend too much time doing that kind of crap. Hey, we're good there. Same thing here. It's easier right away after you get away from those funky angles because this is a little closer to me to be able to move the brush side to side. And then we'll rinse. Now this, you see I'm not rinsing the frame but I can still hit the frame because my frame is clean. That's why I cleaned frames. I am more about quality than quantity, but still in doing this, I always make anywhere from, I would say hundred to $150 an hour cleaning residential with this technique. Cause I have heard some people say, oh, that can't be efficient enough. So that can't work. Well, it works and it works for a great hourly rate. So I would encourage you to do it. But if you found a way that works for you, Perfectly, perfectly fine. I don't care. It's just all about it working for you and making you money. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around this left side. Okay. I got my univalve in here. So I can shut off my water and get this hose aligned over here. As always, one of the worst things at water fed pole is how many times it catches on things. They create a Bluetooth version of a water fed pole. That would just be awesome. That would change the game. So, I just get a bunch of this extra hose over here so I can pull this around and not have it kink. I always try to keep as close to the house as possible so that I have as much good hose as possible. Here, I can't be out as far. I will move the angle a little bit more down so that my brush is always flush on the glass. So this is very important to have that angle on the glass. Now here, since I have a good amount of brick right here, I'll be able to hit all of these, even though they're right uh, below each other for this. So do the same exact thing here. Boom, done cleaning frames there. Okay, boom, come over here. 
exact same method. Clean the frames, go down, clean the frame, clean the frame. Then we're gonna rinse. Okay, are those drip dry? I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna hit this one. I'm gonna hit that whole frame. I'm gonna rinse. Okay, I'm gonna do it to this one. I'm gonna hit that frame, come down, hit that frame again, and we're gonna rinse. And we're done. Then what we're gonna do, while those are drip drying, so we're gonna come hit these frames from over here. So you're always working. There's no reason to ever be stopping, okay? We'll hit those with some water. Get the dirt off there. And this is basically to ensure 100% quality. And that's what I do when I use water-fed pole. Is I ensure it by hitting these frames and getting these frames clean. Now, nothing wrong with not hitting them and getting good results. Just like I said before, but it's just something that I like to do. Had people comment that there's too long of rinse time. I don't care, not my customer, as far as what you're talking about with your customers. Okay, that's literally drip dried long enough. So now we're gonna hit it. So going along the top, boom, boom, boom. And go along the bottom like this too. You don't have to go side to side, but it is good to get those bristles at different motions to really get that good scrub. You don't really see me using the uh, bronze wool attachment here because I really don't need it. Okay, that window's done. And we create a thorough rinse. Going from side to side, hitting the frame and then moving back towards the middle and just repeating it all the way down the glass. Boom, we're done. Okay. Same thing here. Boom, boom, boom. So basically, if you're a newbie and you're wondering what it's like to clean the outside of a home with a water-fed pole, the way I like to do it, and the way that I'll preach to you if I ever sell you a water-fed pole package, is just like I'm doing here. And this works, man. I've been doing this over a decade, and this is the best technique that I have found for water-fed pole work, and I always have really good quality. I've never received a callback for water-fed pole work. Um, using this technique. I have received callbacks using any other techniques such as not cleaning frames um, and all that good stuff. Commercial's a little bit different. We will do a commercial uh, video like this at some point. I've just been doing a lot more residential with the new company, but I've actually thoroughly enjoyed it and been just going through residential jobs like crazy. So it's been super, super nice. So we'll hit this. And you notice I've changed the angle of that brush, making this very easy to scrub at a good angle. My bristles are very wet. They're flowing on the glass. Of course, a hybrid brush is gonna be easier to use, but a boar's hair brush is super, super nice as far as the aggressiveness. I don't use the Alpha scrubber. I just never liked it. Found that it lose contact with the glass too much, so I don't use it. But not that it's a bad tool, just like squeegees. Some people like different style of brushes. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's all about what works for you. So if you want to do this funky side angle, you can. No problem with it whatsoever. Sometimes it can be easier at a funky angle like this. If you ask why didn't I just go through the gate and get this done? That's just because I want to come back and hit these two before I move over there and do their main windows of their uh, family room. Okay, we're back to this one. We've let this drip dry long enough. See, and the really nice thing about this technique is I can hit the frame if I want to, because it's clean. It's already done. So I've basically created the security of knowing that this won't look bad. Because what a lot of guys will do, they will not touch the frame at all. I don't really understand that. <laughs> I'll be quite honest in ensuring quality, but that's okay. Okay, we'll rinse. So you see this much pressure. You see how it's creating quite a bit of circles above. It's too much. It will work for this job. If I was doing a really dirty job, I'd actually turn it down. Um, but that's a little too much, but that shows you what this rinse bar can do. 
and what an X2 can do with the configuration that I set up. Now this is off of typical pressure. You can come across jobs with really shitty pressure. And this one at quite work as well. We get a good angle here and we finish off this. Now it's always good once you water fed pole and it's dried a little bit to always go through, check your work, see if there's any drips. It can happen. You know, there's human error in all of this. None of us are perfect. But like I said earlier, I really just want to show this technique to show you that this is what I 100% do with all residentials and never had a call back with any water fed pole work. If anything, my, all my customers prefer it. This customer prefers it ever since I've been doing it. I used to do this all traditional. They used to have older style, just wood windows. But now they have this. I don't know, I forget always. Yep, I can go here. So your idea with water fed pole is to be fast and efficient. So you don't need to go back and get a bunch of step ladders. So I got a good wall of glass here that's gonna be super easy to do quick. So I go back get my hose this thing disconnects all the time and blows you can tell I'm a little on the uh, tired side of things we thought we were about to have our baby this morning so we went to the hospital it was false alarm so that's why I'm filming a lot of these videos now is to kind of get some work videos out and we'll go back to the new business series while I'm at home, like my website video. I really want to do that. I think that's super, super important um, to talk about. So don't worry, that is all coming. It's just been a really hard year because I thought I was going to have a lot more time. Didn't expect to have a baby this year. Not that it's a major thing, but you know, it's going to take up a lot of time and I really want to fully, fully enjoy it. Okay, so this disconnected, no problem. We'll just coil this up and bring this around this fence. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Reconnect it. Remember, these are two pieces. Some guys don't know that these are actually two pieces. So when you buy this, it can be the Gilmore on off valve or the zero outlet quick connect with the 5 16th hose barb oh look at this these are the kind of things that happen all the time this stuff just gets kinked overall i like this hose it's worked out really really well okay so for something like this there's not i'll move this i don't really need to but is it pretty heavy oh that's heavy as shit. okay all right, so this is a pretty easy area to do. So we'll hit all these frames of these four. And by the time we hit all these frames in this area, we'll be good to go back and hit this top. But you see, there's dirt coming off of these frames. So when I do stuff traditionally, I always wipe frames as well. That's why I really like cleaning the frames when I do water fed pull because it's the same, same stuff. You wanna charge the same for water fed pole as you charge for traditional, then it has to be the same look when you're done, which requires you to wipe the frames down. So you should be doing that when you do traditional to mostly of the cobwebs um, or just extra dirt that can be around it. But I'll give it a very, very thorough rinse here just to make sure that's all gone before we move to other frames and give those a rinse. This home is cleaned, I would say once a year. So everything is dirty, but nothing is overly dirty that I have to worry about being right there on the window. I will use water fed pole on homes that have even not been cleaned in like 20 years, uh, unless it's construction clean. If it's construction clean, then I will not touch it with a water fed pole, except for on Saturday, I had a construction clean where I pretty much had to because someone knows we're super high, but it was a remodel and the only the inside had stickers and debris and the outside who was very well taken care of. So I do that, I rinse my frames. Okay, now probably that top one is already good to go. So I will 
use the swiveling motion of the tucker swivel to really get a good scrub on that oval. I think tucker swivel or some sort of swivel is extremely, extremely necessary. It still allows you to do as much force on windows, but it allows you to do angles like this and still keep your brush fresh on the glass where if it was just a stiff fixed, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I would always, always, always get a swivel if possible. But if you're tight on budget, it is something that you can wait on, but they're about 30 bucks. Okay. I'm not seeing any debris here to use the bronze wool on. So boom, we'll give that an awesome, awesome rinse there. Rinse, most important step. You have to rinse all of the dirty water off to truly get good results. It's just the facts. Okay, so then what I literally do, I will go to this set, hit their frames, be very careful of that light. I'm basically trying to go kind of quick here too to get done before uh, the storms roll in. Okay, this window is by a barbecue. So I may need to come hit it again with my squeegee and get some of the barbecue spots off, but we'll see how it goes for right now since these windows are always well taken care of. Okay, and just from doing that, that's enough time to go back and hit these. Remember, this drip time is on a day where it's about, let's say it's about 75 degrees right now. So my drip time is pretty quick and my dry time is pretty quick. If you're doing this in the winter, you have a lot longer dry time or drip time. So that's one thing to think about as well. well. What you'll see me do here is you'll see me do the two side windows before I do the middle window of the half moon that I did above it to allow drip time there as well. But because I've already hit the frames and everything, we're pretty good to go as far as that goes. Okay, we'll hit those again. Be careful of the lights. Once again, this is where the swivel is gonna come into play very nice. We'll really work that middle just to agitate all that dirt, get that bottom line, hit that frame while we're doing it. So that frame is already done. So we don't need to do any sort of drip time or clean the frame there because we've already done it while cleaning the window above it. That's a very important step too. You always try to wanna work efficiently and get this stuff done. Okay, we're good to go on this one. So we boxed out. Now we're just working the middle. I usually like to have a rule of going back and forth, um, hitting the glass four times fleshly. I don't always do it, but that is the rule that I try to remember. I usually do it a little bit less than that. As you can start feeling that the window is clean. All of these pretty much feel pretty good from the beginning. But my flow is so great, I can go pretty quick on this. Okay, so we'll let that frame drip dry as well. Okay, while that's going on for those, we'll come over here and we'll hit this stuff. Just make this hose a little longer. I don't do, I'm not gonna do, actually, I will do these doors with it. These doors used to be wood. When it's like wood, wood on door jams like this, sometimes I won't hit it with a water fed pole. Um, just due to, I hope, I just don't like to ever possibly damage anything. Not that it will damage, everything outside should be fine, but it's just a personal thing that I do to ensure quality. When you do these, you can actually do these all in one step. From what I found, you don't need to do separate steps with them. If you just rinse off here when you're first doing it and give it a thorough scrub, you are set to go. And he also cleans these regularly because I gave him a squeegee and a mop about seven years ago that he loves. Okay. Boom. 
cleaning all those. Same here. We'll clean the frame. And what I could have done is clean the frames of all three of these and then gone back and clean the glass. But really, whatever you want to do here, but you can see these ones are pretty freaking clean already. And see the reason why I like water fed pole, you can just flush out everything. We can just work to the side here. If you want to work up and down, might be good to change the angle of the brush so that it's more comfortable for you. And if you use the rinse blower a lot, I would take off the T-fitting here. It makes everything flow a lot easier. Right. Flush that. Boom. Okay, same thing here. I know this video is not as fun to watch as it is to watch someone squeegeeing, but this will really help you guys who, and gals who, you know, are getting into water fed pole or have a lot of questions about really what to do with water fed pole. You see a lot of guys in the UK go super fast with water fed pole. And for them, it's a lot different with homes and that they're doing maintenance cleaning over there, we're here. That is not a big thing. Um, at least where I'm at, that's not a big thing. And we couldn't use water fed pole year around or else it wouldn't, it wouldn't work just because of how cold it is. I mean, you guys have seen me do videos trying it in the winter and it does work for certain stuff. But, you know, maintenance cleans, like there's a huge home that I've done many times on my channel um, and that's a maintenance clean and I can do outside of the whole home in like an hour and a half but if it was regularly dirty it would probably take me like three and a half hours for what i would actually need to do to let it drip dry if you ever feel like your rinse isn't good enough it's fine to go back and do a double rinse Good there. I'll show you what the first guy ever who taught me on water fed pole trained me to do this. One, two, three, four. Box out, up, across, across. Angle your brush like this, and that's it. That will not get the window clean enough. Scrubbing is fine, but it's that, that final rinse that you really need that thorough side to side rinse all the way down the window. If you don't believe that, then you're more of a splash and dasher. That's fine, if it works for you. I'm not calling out anyone in this video, I'm just calling things like they are. But see that? That's hydrophilic. That is all hydrophilic. That's why it looks like that. I'll get comments like, hey, why doesn't it look like what it looks like in your videos? Just a difference in glass. That's hydrophilic glass right there. So it looks really pretty. Now, if hydrophobic, it's just going to beat up. And that's just the way glass is. That's nothing to do with your brush, your water-fed pole system, or the way I filmed it, or nothing. It just is what it is. And as it dries, it will become slightly of a more hydrophilic look that beads up. But just know, with water-fed pole, just like sometimes with traditional, you may have to go back and clean a couple windows because of mistakes. And that's totally reasonable. And it happens in both forms and fashions of using any sort of window cleaning tools. But people get so mad about it with water fed pull. It's just part of the job. It's like any job, nothing's perfect. So relax about it. it just comes with the territory. See, look at that. It's just perfect. Oh, okay. Go back. Hit this window. Everything is drip dried enough. Now, drip dry doesn't mean all the way dry. It just means letting that drip for a little bit to get some of that dirty water off of there. And I find that, that a good 60 seconds to two minutes is perfect. So by the time I do all of this, by the end, it's pretty much all done. And with a ladder setup, uh, this would take longer to clean 
I don't use traditional pole work on a lot of homes like this. Um, you technically could have more issues than not for water fit. Pole just does a perfect job. I feel like it was a little too fast on that rinse. So I'll rinse thoroughly one more time, just in case. Okay, and we got these two windows to finish up here. But just like with the squeegee, people are gonna have different techniques with water fed pole that works really good for them. So I'm not saying that if you have a different technique that it's wrong, but I have been using this technique for a very long time and have found it extremely beneficial and do a lot of huge jobs on my own that come out perfect and that I get good reviews about with water fed pole. So when someone tells me that water fed pole doesn't work, I really can't believe them. Let me make sure my camera's still on here. It is. 65%, that's okay. So all that is done right there. We've been here for 35 minutes. And what we'll do once we get too far over here is I will unattach the water fed pole from my 5 16th uh, barb adapter for the outlet quick connect. We'll move the hose around the house, bring it back to here. We'll finish up the back and then I'll go upstairs. I'll go up on the roof. We'll clean the skylights, the water fed pole as well. And then we are done with water fed pole. This customer doesn't have me do their basements. So that's pretty nice actually. But you can see we're almost at the extent here of what we can do with this configuration. Normally doing this home traditionally takes me about five and a half hours if I'm just taking my time with water fed pull. It takes me four. But I also talk to them for quite a bit when I'm here usually, but they're not here right now. Okay, so I'm rinsing that frame really thoroughly. For this big window, I'm gonna rinse the sides too. You know, something when um, the window cleaning palm was here, you know, something he said, it's like water fed pole is like the ultimate treatment. You get the frames clean, you get everything clean, all in like one tool. You don't need a towel to wipe down the frames, then a, a washer sleeve to scrub the window, and then, you know, a towel to wipe down the frames. It's just like, it's so simple. It's so simple. So I'm gonna try to see if I can reach this high window to my left above here in these trees so that when I move my hose around, the drip time of that will be enough that I won't have to not worry about anything else with it. So let's see if we can do that. Hose might be at its extent here. No, I think we'll be good to at least get that far. See, I'll even make it go as close to the house as possible so that I get the most out of it that I can get. We may, we may not get what I want here. I think I'll get what I want. It's about 20 feet up. I got 40 feet of hose here. So I think we'll be good. So I can drip dry a little bit on a lot of this stuff. So to go up there, oh, we're good on angle. So hit that, there's a skylight right above there on the roof. So you see, I'm always just trying to work efficiently with this as possible. Oh, my water. What did I do there? I turned this off like an idiot. Yep. Look at this bird, got fucked up. Okay, we're here. All right, we're gonna hit our frames real quick. We got some air in our line. We hit our frame, we rinse off our frame. Boom, boom, boom. We do that here as well. 
Boom. We rinse off our frame. Okay. I don't think that this will let me reach. This one will I? Oh yeah. Yeah. Guys, right, so we are literally super close to being done with the exterior as far as the water fed work. It's kind of crazy. Okay, so we're letting that drip dry, right? So all makes sense to you. We're gonna scrub that frame a little bit too. Rinse that off, okay. Now, we're gonna go back and hit this big one. Give it a good scrub. You'll notice I haven't used my bronze wool once. That's because I mainly use it for poop or stubborn stains that just aren't coming off of the glass. It's just an extra step. So, but I don't need it. I don't add it. So we're trying to work efficiently as possible. Of course, a higher flow rate is gonna make rinse time quicker. This is why I always encourage an X2 or with a zero pier to have a booster pump on hand just in case of low pressure. You have to understand these systems have no control over what pressure you're gonna receive out of the actual uh, water source. Okay, we're back here again. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll hit that top one and we'll hit that moon. And then we will go grab our hose. We'll move it around the house. Come back around the other side. We'll hit the rest of this stuff back here. And we'll hit the, uh, the front set, the one above the door. I always do traditionally. It's got a big old... Um, wood frame around it that likes to drip and I just know it. So I always just do it traditionally inside and out. They have a lot of high skylights in here that I pull. Sometimes your finger can be a really good asset. Let me just dry this off. Okay, get this clean. Good rinse. Once again though, I really feel like this is a, a little too much pressure, but I'm rolling with it because of the casements and I know how clean they are. Okay. Okay. We will hit this one now. Then after we hit it, we'll come down below and we'll hit the frames of that window so that that can drip dry as well. I usually spend the most time out the top that's going to rinse down most of the dirt and just always end it at the bottom just to ensure that i've rinsed off all the dirt okay good there rinse we hit our moon make it easy on me as possible I 
See, I can still hit my frame, but I'm not getting any sort of dripping going on. Any dirty dripping. There's gonna be dripping, but no dirty dripping. That's enough for that. Uh, all clean. So I forgot to do this when we were over here. So I'll hit this real quick. What I'll actually do, I just hit this and finish it. One thing you can do if you're in a rush is if you give it a real thorough rinse there in the frame. Before you do this one, you can come back pretty quickly and do this one if you're willing to check it at the end and make sure everything looks good. And I'll be honest, I think everything's gonna look fine. I'm gonna do that for this. I'll give that a real thorough rinse. Back and forth a few times. And we'll hit this one starting at the bottom. Letting that top drip as much as possible. I already feel like the glass is pretty smooth. I feel pretty good about hitting that. Okay. All right. I got that. That's gonna dry great. We'll do the same thing here. And what we'll actually do is we'll go back to that half moon and we'll do the lower there. So that in the front, all we gotta do is the front. Oh, rinse on that little piece of crap. We got a very good rinse here. Okay, turn that off. These be done here. Remember, we've already cleaned these frames, so we're good to go. I'm cleaning the windows. little piece of junk right there. That oh, looks to be something else. Okay. And you could start changing your technique as you do a house and you feel how clean or dirty the glass is, but it's not too dirty. You can start moving a little quicker on the rinses. That's why you see me changing it up a bit here. Okay, so I will leave my pole here. I will get my hose. Get my hose here. That will turn off, it will disconnect. Bring that all the way around by itself. This is just an easier way to bring the hose around the house. Okay. These are the windows that we will clean. I'll put this here and I will bring this out to here back to our system. We got a bunny in there. Thing. Okay. As you can see, the windows we've done here. Boom. 
look like perfection. Almost dry already. Perfect. 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 That is a quick glance at it all. So when I do the inside, I will look at everything. Um, that is a benefit of doing the outside first. But like I was saying, what I usually do is clean the inside first, then clean screens. Then while the screen's dry, clean the outside. But with this one, I am trying to beat the storm that is coming later on. I'm kind of trying to see if I can do this whole home in about two to three hours. But it's kind of a stupid goal, really. I'm really not scheduling too much windows right now in anticipation for the baby. So, uh, yep, that's that. Oh, windows up there. These are the windows sometimes I'll get a nasty trip from one of these, but they look good. And that's the reality of it, guys, is that you sometimes will get a drip. They think you'll never get a drip, but you'll never get a spot. It's just a little bit lunatic. If you ask me, I used to see jobs where guys would leave on commercial frames 20, 30 drips from a window and commercial companies would say nothing about it. It was crazy. I would never do stuff like that, but it is the reality of it in that for like commercial buildings, water fed pole is a very cheap way of doing everything. So then what I'm going to do after this is put my brush up there. I'll walk around inside the home, get on the roof, come grab my water fed pole from there, do all the skylights up on that roof. It's just three of them, it's not really that bad. Okay, so for here, once again, give everything a really thorough rinse. This one, I'm kind of cleaning the glass a little bit too. It should dry pretty quick for it being right in the sun. Okay, then we'll clean the sides. See, this is super nice too, because they have plants here that you really don't want to mess up. One thing I'd be careful about too, is ever putting too much pressure on the brush on the glass just in case like I've had jobs before where I'm like have this thing out many many feet like 30 40 feet and I'm putting a lot of pressure on the window and I swear I've come close to breaking windows <laughs> but it never happened but just always be aware if you're not getting good glide with the boar hair safer to go to a nylon brush where you'll get really good glide from I'm pretty happy with that amount of rinse time just because the sun is on it. And we'll just get this a real good scrub. So I see a little black spot there. Boom, done. It's pretty much what I use my bronze wool for. Okay. There's some sort of scratching right there on that window that I can see. I really agitate this bottom. Some guys will talk about, hey, I get marks at my bottom. That's just from not agitating the bottom. So what a lot of guys do is when they're scrubbing, they kind of stop before this bottom and they really don't give it the, the treatment that they need. So it's a lot better if you can do this and get that agitation on it. We have a spot there now. I just love this technique because I can hit the frames as much as I want again. There's no dirt coming off of them. Remember, you know, I always tell you that it's actually easier to learn water fed pole than to learn a squeegee, but you know, you gotta, you gotta know that it's gonna take some time. You know, it's not gonna be a quick, quick thing. There's a technique to it. Some guys, it's like nothing for them. They get it first day, boom, this thing's great. And there's others that get it and they have problems for, you know, six months. 
um, when I first started waterfed pole, I talk about it, I didn't like it that much. Um, that was just because I wasn't taking the time necessary to learn the steps that I needed to learn. So I really tell you, take your time, learn it. Don't try to go too fast. Don't try to run before you can walk, you know? And please don't take this as I'm just trying to tell you guys what to do, but I just felt like this video was needed to give you kind of a long walkthrough of exactly what I do. You know, I'm mainly doing a lot of sales nowadays, more than I thought I would this year. So it's important to be able to put this content out and make it easier for you guys that purchase equipment through me to know exactly what I do and to kind of train you so that I don't have to come to your state or wherever and train you. Um, I find this just to be a better way if you're willing to sit down for an hour and, and watch a video like this. But it's just amazing because all these things can drip and they're dripping clean water. So I'm good to go. Now I'll finish off this one. We've been letting that drip dry. This will be a window that I will check towards the end to make sure it looks good because of how much water is dripping off of there. But most likely everything will be fine. It is definitely nice too, you know, when you when you know a job, you're always gonna be able to move quicker on it than your first time at a certain house. But if you create a good system for it, as far as water effect pole and always follow it, you can really get a lot of good work done and get it done efficiently and quick. See that overspray? That overspray is what I don't really like. If this stuff was really dirty, that overspray would be an issue because that overspray would actually be part pure water, part dirty water, and probably be getting spots on a lot of this glass. Now I remembered, a few spots here and there. Nobody's gonna say anything about it, trust me. Trust me. I find too that a lot of the spots that happen are super clear. I'm rinsing these off because of that overspray that I saw. Okay, I'm gonna set my water fed pole up so I can come grab it off the roof and I'll come meet you guys at the brush after I go upstairs through the house so I don't use my ladder. Oh, oh yeah, always, huh? Always, okay. So, put this right up here in this corner and I just come grab it. I always try to get my hose too because I know I'll pick up all the way to this uh, on off valve will come up on the roof. So I'll get this here so I don't have a lot of weight and boom. All right, I'll meet you guys back up on the roof. Okay, so we're up on the patio. Okay, so we're up on the patio that I'll go up on the roof. These windows, when I come and do with the squeegee, I just do by hand. Remember those windows. There is one of the skylights there, but I just do them all from the roof. So, beautiful views out here. Let's move these to the side. These type of roofs, I'm 220 pounds, so I'm super careful on these kind of roofs. Um, really try to keep minimal pressure down. I was at a job with my friend Keith and he weighed about 150 pounds or maybe 180. And the difference between me walking on these and the sound of him was totally different. See, you see this? So be real careful on this stuff. I use the gutter to support me if needed. I'm not a professional roofer. If you guys have any tips on how to walk on these, it'd be much appreciated. I'm also pretty top heavy and fat. You hear that? You hear that? I don't have a lot of uh, Spanish tiles in this area, so that's really nice. It's mostly these, but I almost walk on all fours to do this stuff. You know, skylights are really, it's like, what's really the importance of them? But, they get so freaking dirty. 
as much as possible. I don't try to let the water fed pole go up the gutter so they don't get anything on the gutter. But not that it won't happen at all. Then we'll hit this one first here. See, it's pretty dirty. Make sure this is on. Yeah, it's on. Had so many issues. I've had so many issues with this GoPro where I think that it's on and then it's not on. But you see how the bore here really does a nice job in getting all that bug shit off the phone's going off here hey what's up oh so uh no yeah oh you have too much shit i don't want to pick up any more shit <laughs> yeah okay Cool deal. I'm on Wayne's roof right now cleaning the skylight, so I better go. All right, love you, bye. Phone call. See the little waspy wasps. So if you got little stubborn stains on here, I almost use this corner of the bronze wool more. But you see it just gets that little stubborn debris off. It's not gonna get paint off, so don't expect that. It's not gonna get silicone off but it's gonna get a lot off. And we'll just give that a thorough rinse. And that skylight's done. Okay, then what we'll do is most likely, I should have done this one actually last because my hose is most likely gonna hit um, on here so that's something i should have thought about but i didn't and now my hose is starting to catch so this is always a a task and a half just making sure that this part doesn't come undone from the weight i found these gilmore ones these are gilmore the other ones are I believe ungers. These ones will release a lot more than the other ones do. So most of the time, if I just, uh, just wants to go down. You son of a gun, you. We'll try to get it. I don't like to put it, we'll lay it here. There we go. Okay, now we'll walk up this guy and we'll get our other skylights here see this is why I just love water fed pull for this I don't got to get over there and get no funky angle just extend this biatch and get this thing done work my top I'll give it a rinse right away, just like I did any other window. I think because it's a skylight, it's getting lots and lots of sun. I'm not too worried about drip time. Beautiful. I'll go over here. I'll hit our other one. 
Turn water off. Bet roofers are watching. If you're a roofer and you're watching this, you're probably thinking, "This mother effer don't know how to walk on a roof." You are correct. I don't want to die, but I still get the job done. Nothing wrong with sitting down. This how I'll do solar panels a lot. Sit down like this and just let the pole do the work. How beautiful is that? I like doing sales, but shit, guys, going out and cleaning is pretty awesome. this dude doing and rinse done okay turn that water off this with shingles I would just be going right around it I am just very calm and calculated with these type of roofs it's worth it for your reputation not to break these tiles not that it might never happen but I just try to take my time with it I remember I was cleaning skylights at a university with Jim once and there was a roofer guy that came to put up um, anchors for us so that we could tie off and he just walked right up this super steep grade. I was like, you should hire this guy. So you see here, my hose hit the glass. We have dirty marks, so that's why I should have done that one last. So, I am human. I don't know everything. Never said I did. Get that angle right. Okay. Okay. See that? All dirty just because of the hose. We'll agitate that and give it one final rinse. We'll be good to go. Boom. Done with all the water fed pool work. I think that was an hour and about 15 minutes. Okay, so to bring this off the roof, what I will do is I will extend out and I will also let this down. I'll 
keeping hold of this part. And let that go. I know that's gonna be about probably 20 feet. Let that hit the gutter as much as possible. But it probably will a little bit put you to the ground. Boom, well, that's done. Walk back up. And boom, bada boom. All done with watershed pork and a beautiful view. I want to finish up this home and uh, I hope this has been somewhat helpful for you as far as uh, just seeing a whole outside only of a job. Um, just remember to walk before you run with stuff like this. There's too many people trying to go too quick with it and uh, get bad results. So take your time and really work with it. And uh, I'm always here for you guys as far as putting these packages together for you and getting you going with water fed pole or any traditional tools as well. So if you want to hit me up for tools, I'm always available 970-599-1437. I do now split my time between that and uh, this. So I'm online Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, usually Sunday evenings on the online chat windowcleaner.com. It's just how the cookie crumbled this year and it was a great opportunity so uh, I took advantage of it and I've been really really happy so uh, yeah that's it I know it's a super long video again but I think this will really really help uh, you if you really want to do your research on on what you're doing and I filmed a lot more stuff this year uh, different type of windows that I'll be putting out like an ultimate technique video probably on window clean resources YouTube channel but uh, yeah that's it and uh, talk soon peace bye